We will now discuss deadlocks in detail. We will first describe the system model and then talk about how we can characterize the existence of a deadlock. That will be followed by the discussion of different uh, mechanisms for handling deadlocks, uh, like prevention of deadlocks, uh, deadlock avoidance, and deadlock detection. And finally, we will talk about how we recover from uh, a deadlock if any occurs. So first of all, what's a deadlock? If a process, say a process P1, holds a resource and is waiting for the resource held by another process to become available, while that other process waits for a resource held by this process to be available, then we have those two processes waiting for each other. They're both in waiting or blocked state. Therefore, none of them could proceed. Therefore, uh, this waiting each other state will never be broken. Hence, we say these two processes are deadlocked. In the case of a deadlock, it doesn't always have to be two processes. It could be that process P1 waits for P2, P2 waits for P3, P3 waits for P4, and P4 waits back P1. Note that there should be that cycle uh, back to P1. So none of them will be able to proceed because they're all waiting for each other. Since they're all waiting for processes that are already blocked, and this deadlock will never be broken. Uh, so that's what we mean uh, by a deadlock. And as we said, uh, in this chapter, we'll be discussing ways of preventing or avoiding such things from happening. So for the system model, let's consider this. First of all, you need two sets. You need a set of processes and you need a set of resources. Now we're going to define the resources according to their resource types. What we mean by resource type could be, for example, you could be waiting for some memory space uh, for the processes or for some I.O. device, for example, you want to read from the disk. Or it could be also soft resources, like uh, a data structure. You have, for example, two processes uh, that are uh, trying to access the same shared variable, or maybe a shared array, shared buffer, whatever. Uh, or it could be a device like, let's say, a printer modem, anything. Now, we will talk about the types of these devices, but each type could have, for example, several instances. What we mean by several instances is the following. For example, if the resource type is printer, and if you have, let's say, three printers in your lab, then these it doesn't matter which one of these three printers is printing your document. So we will say in that case, we have a resource type named printer, and this printer resource type has three instances because it's not important which of these three printers is printing. However, if one of these printers is, say, a color printer and the other two are black and white printers, and if it's important for you whether it's printed in color or in black and white, in that case, actually you have two resource types. You have a color printer resource type, which is separate from the black and white printer resource type, which has two instances, whereas the color printer resource type has one instance. Anyways, from now on, we are not going to specifically discuss the types of resources. We'll just say resource type are I, and really we don't care uh, what that resource is. It doesn't matter whether that's a disk or uh, printer or uh, some, for example, database record. It's the, all the same for us. Uh, and their corresponding instances, one or many. Each process will need some primitives to make a request of some resource type. It finally, ultimately, hopefully, uh, that resource type, an instance of that resource type will be assigned to that process. So for some definite time, that uh, process will be using that instance of the resource type and then finally releasing it. For a deadlock to occur, now, we can talk about four different uh, conditions. Now, for a deadlock to occur, 
all of these four instances written here in blue color should hold pay attention simultaneously. So if any one of these conditions is not met, then we don't have a deadlock for sure. Now let's see what those conditions are. The first one is mutual exclusion. So we're assuming that a resource, when it grabs an instance, it's using it in a mutually exclusive manner, not in a shared manner. If it's in a shared manner, then you won't have a deadlock because uh, if one is holding, the other one is also able to. So we assume that those resources are uh, accessed in a mutually exclusive manner. The second one is hold and wait. That means process P1 holds, let's say, resource 1, R1, and it is waiting another resource, let's say, R2, held by some other process, P2. So P1 is not able to proceed because R2 is not available yet. It's held by another process. Okay, so that's why we say hold and wait. P1 is holding R1 and it's waiting for R2, which is held by some other process. The third uh, condition is no preemption. That means our processes are kind processes. Remember, R1 was being held by P1 and R2 was being held by P2. So we're assuming that P1 does not say, hey, give me that resource. That's not possible. It has to wait for this process to complete its task with this resource and voluntarily release the resource so that P2 can also grab that resource and proceed hopefully. So we're not assuming pre preemption, in other words. And the last condition is circular wait. That's what we already discussed. P1 waits for P2, P2 waits for P3. It goes this way. Finally, Pn waits for the first one, P1. If it's just a chain without the loop itself, without the cycle, then you won't have the deadlock. Because anyways, the one at the end of the chain will at some point complete its task, when the process is completed, it will release all resources. So any process that was waiting for that process, says resources, will, able, will be able to acquire those resources, and therefore that will complete, and therefore it will release all of its resources. So it becomes possible for the processes that are waiting for that one. In this manner, all processes could complete. For a deadlock to occur, that in that chain you should loop back to the beginning. So there should always be a cycle. So that's, if these four conditions hold, then we suspect of the existence of a deadlock. So to be able to see if there is such a cycle, if the processes are waiting to each, for each other or not, we will be drawing what's called a resource allocation graph. A resource allocation graph as a regular graph, has a set of vertices and a set of edges, where the vertices could be partitioned into two. One is a set of processes, and the other one is a set of resources. And in the graph, we will have two different types of edges. One is the request edge from the process, from a process to a resource. It shows that, for example, process PI once an instance of resource type J. Note that uh, it wants any instance of resource type J. It's uh, satisfactory to get one of those resources. The assignment edge is in the reverse direction. In that case, an instance of resource type RJ is assigned to process PI. So when you have the request edge, that means PI, PI has made a request for RJ and it's waiting for an assignment. If one is available, there will always be that assignment and the link direction will change in the reverse way. So we will be representing in our resource allocation graphs the processes with circles, the resource types with squares, where each instance is shown by a separate smaller uh, square. And uh, if there is a request from process PI to resource type J, it will be shown with such an arrow. Note that it is from the process to the resource type, not to individual 
uh, instances here because any one of these instances it's satisfactory for PI. However, in the case of an assignment, we will be specifically drawing uh, the arrow from the corresponding instance that has been assigned to PI towards PI. So an example of a, a resource allocation graph is as follows. Uh, here we have uh, in this system three processes, P1, P2, and P3. P1 has been assigned an instance of R2, and it is waiting for an instance of R1, actually the only instance of R1, to become available. But that instance, unfortunately, has been assigned to P2. So P1 cannot continue until it gets this resource, which implies it has to wait for P2 to complete its task. P2 has been assigned. This resource type from R1, uh, this instance from R1, and this instance from R2. But to proceed, it still needs another resource of type R3. But the only instance there has been assigned to P3. Therefore, P1 and P2 cannot proceed. They are both blocked at the moment. P3 can be can proceed because it doesn't. It's not waiting for any other resource. It was requesting a single resource that was an instance of R3 and got it. So P3 will eventually complete. It will take some time. It has to execute its instructions. But there is nothing preventing PT from completing. So when P3 completes, it will release this instance, R3, which will be assigned immediately to the process that's waiting, which is P2. When P2 is assigned R3, now there's nothing that's preventing uh, P2 from completing. So after some time, eventually P2 will complete and will release R3, R1, and also R2 here, this instance of R2. The release of this instance here in R1 will allow P1 to get that instance. So P1 now has all the resources it was asking for. So P1 will be able to also complete. So there is no deadlock in this example. However, with the addition of a single link here, this link from P3 to R2, pay attention, uh, not this one, but when this one is added, we have a problem. Now, this link implies that P3 is requesting an instance of R2, but both instances are assigned to P1 and P2 respectively. But since P1 and P2 are blocked, they cannot proceed. P2 is waiting for P3 to complete, but P3 cannot complete because P2 and P1 are holding these two resources and they cannot proceed. So P3 will wait. Since P3 waits, P2 cannot complete. And since P2 cannot complete, P1 cannot complete. So none of these resources will become available. So these three processes will be blocked indefinitely. That's why it's called a deadlock. Note that in this case, we do have uh, actually two cycles. One cycle is in here. From R2, following this link, this link here, you can go to P2. From P2, you can go to P3. In this way, we have a cycle. Now, that's not the only cycle. Actually, there is yet another cycle, and that's the following. See, from R2, we can go this way, following the direction of the arcs correctly. We have yet another cycle. So here, in this example, we actually have not one, but two cycles. And yes, in this one, we have a deadlock. In this graph, we still have a cycle. See, if you follow the arcs this way, you have a cycle. But there is no deadlock because P2 can eventually complete 
and when to uh, when p2 completes this resource uh, instance of r1 will become available so p1 which is waiting for an instance to, to become available will be able to get this resource so p1 can complete when p1 completes uh, this resource will become available so p3 can complete anyways there was nothing blocking p2 and p4 they could also complete now of course i could tell this story the other way around like i could have started with p4 first completing then p2 there are multiple solutions out of the state therefore there is no deadlock actually it is sufficient to show that there is one way out of this uh, even one possible sequencing of these processes uh, properly completing is sufficient to prove that there is no deadlock so the basic facts we have acquired from this discussion is first of all if a graph contains no cycles definitely there is no deadlock no argument but if it contains a cycle now the existence of a cycle is a requirement but it's not sufficient so that means it is possible that you have a cycle but no deadlock so uh, that's possible however if each instance in these resource types had single instances if each resource type had a single instance then definitely there would be a deadlock okay so once again if only one instance per resource type then definitely we have a deadlock if there's a cycle but if there's a cycle and if there are several instances per resource type you might have a deadlock or maybe you don't we will look at this look at the details of this in the following slide in the following video sorry